I'm sorry, fellas. For as long as shit like this is on the market, there is no argument here. I'm sorry. So this place that I'm working in now is the, uh, it's one of the Amnesty stores, which you saw in a previous video. I'll leave a link for it up here now. Um, we did an EICR on it and it, it failed naturally. Um, and one of the things it uh, needs to get sorted is this fire alarm system. This actually wasn't part of the EICR, but it's something which needs to be done here. So at the moment we've got a general fault and a sounder fault. I'm just curious why there's general faults here because I had one of these panels before and the general fault was the panel was just shot and we had to put a new panel in. All right, let the dog see the rabbit, as they say. So we've got, fault is on the rear, so the front has no fault at all. So if we just disconnect the front, I'm just curious to see if the front, okay, so that is definitely working. So what if, okay, it's saying we've got a fire in the rear. Yeah, we don't have a fire. I just want to see if that, now I've put zone one and zone two, I just want to see if that clears. Let's just reset it and see. Okay, what if I put zone two into zone one? Okay, it's not a fault with the panel because if I take out the good leg and alternate it around, the fault shifts. That's good. I'm happy with that much at least because I didn't really want to start changing this panel over. I mean, if you have to, you have to, but it's nice if you can avoid it. So there's just a fault on that leg. So I'm gonna have to get above the ceiling and see if we can get to the bottom of why. Okay, let's have a little look-see up here. Oh, rat shit, that's nice. I've got to go around and start clipping up all this cabling. Ow. I'm always worried that when you poke your head above a suspended ceiling, a rat is going to come and just start having lunch on your face. It's covered in fucking rat hair as well, it's disgusting. Or mouse hair, whatever you want to call it. I'll get some of that, or, you know, the galvanised band, and I'll just screw it straight to the ceiling. Now those batteries were fitted February 14. I've got a feeling those are going to be cooked anyway, so they'd need replacing. I've done more than a few years of service. Now, when it comes to testing alarm batteries and stuff like this one here, I mean, I'm going to replace this anyway. Uh, but I know a few people in the comments have asked, how do you actually go about testing, you know, these sort of batteries and stuff? I use one of these little units here. This one was quite expensive. You can buy, I think you can get them cheaper now, but you can buy these sort of intelligent battery testers for about somewhere in the region of about 300 quid, maybe even cheaper than that now. This I paid 300 for this one. They're very good units, so they just literally simulate, uh, they just simulate a, a full battery discharge. The biggest thing I find with them is you've just got to make sure the, the tips on the battery are super, super clean, otherwise you get false readings. One and a half amps, that battery is shot. Okay, that's less than half of its actual capacity. So yeah, I'd have to replace the batteries in this alarm anyway. While I was working on the fuse board just there, I was, uh, I just happened to notice in the uh, leisure and lifestyle section here, there was a, a book, the DIY manual. Um, <laughs> and just out of curiosity, I opened it up just to have a look and see what was, yeah, what was in it. There is, there's everything. There's even how to change a consumer unit, a consumer unit, man, really. All the pictures, everything. Running in cables, wiring plugs, single to double sockets. Moving a ceiling rose, that's code for just pull it out of the ceiling, wrap a load of tape around it and throw the wire over the ceiling. Because there's a few in the sort of Ainley Retentive Brigade who go on about like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this because some little old man might see what you're doing on YouTube and he might copy you and die. Really, come on. I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas. For as long as shit like this is on the market, there is no argument here. I'm sorry. Have you noticed how it's always little old men? It's never a young couple, you know? It's never a single woman alone with six kids dangling around her ankles. Always a little old man in a bungalow. Had that on Twitter once. We were talking, I was talking about YouTube to somebody and some guy and he came up in the comments and he was like, um, 
He said, uh, oh, I think this is terrible, this whole YouTube thing. Uh, I did a call out the other day, some li little old man uh, trying to move a socket or something. And when I said, when I asked why, he said, oh, I saw someone on YouTube doing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, fella. You know, you can't teach stupid, you know, there's a certain amount of common sense here, you know. You don't see someone throw themselves off a cliff and then you go and follow. You see plumbers change boilers all the time, but I'm not going to go and fucking change mine, am I? There's a certain amount of common sense. But yeah, sorry, for as long as there are books like this on the market, sorry fellas, there's no argument here as far as I'm concerned. Apparently the furthest you can climb on though, I mean, you're, in fact, you're already breaking health and safety because apparently I didn't know this. Go. Right, I'll, I'll have that conversation with you in a second. Yeah, apparently you can't, that bottom step there, in fact, there's a sticker on the side, that bottom step is the maximum you can go up that ladder. So these other, Basically, yeah, it's this bottom step here. Oh no, don't, yeah, don't stand on or above this rung. So basically, <laughs> that, that's it. I cannot stand any further on this ladder. It's such bollocks, you know? I'm tiptoeing the top of the It's just, you know what I mean? If you had to try and follow health and safety everywhere, every day, you'd, you just wouldn't get anything done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to take the cover off. <laughs> yeah, now we'll have to put a mini scaffold there now, yeah. that's it. It's got to be a tower scaffold, yeah. All right, you test that one. Oh, it's gone off. All right, that's all of them working. Silence, yes. Reset. All right, those are all working, cool. While I've been off cam, I did pick up some new batteries around the corner. I'll actually, I'll do a test on those again. You can see the difference between a set of five-year-old batteries, um, sorry, a set of five-year-old batteries and a set of new batteries. Not everybody does it, but I do like to just put the date of the uh, installation on the top of the battery, just because it helps the next person when they come to do an inspection or something in two years, three, you know, whenever. Fuck. <laughs> what month of the year are we? July. Fuck. Let's see what this one is. 13 volts. Just over three amp hour. So it's almost fully charged. It's almost there. So... It does make a difference. He's a very handy little bits of kit to have. I'll, I'll try and find a link where I got this from and I'll leave it in the description below. I find on these systems it normally takes a few minutes to clear a power supply fault for some reason. I don't know why. Give it a few minutes and that light will go out. It doesn't seem to matter whether you reset the system or not. I found that on numerous ones of these, these style units. Oh, come on you. Okay, it's not that way. Not that way either. I'm starting to see why the other fitter didn't put this in the ceiling grid. Ah! Oh. <sighs> fuck, fuck for that. There's some people who poo poo these twin flex pro systems and stuff. And I don't see why. I think, to be, I think a lot of people who poo poo it, they fitted it and they've had issues with it and they just don't like it after that. I don't get it. At the, same, at the end of the day, it's the same as any other smoke, just like these, same as any other smoke detector system. And they're built to such high stand that, you know, it's a life safety system. They're built to such perfect standards. You know, they just don't, they just don't go wrong, you know? The reason they go wrong is because people fit them, you know, they're on job and knock, they're in a hurry, they fit it in a rush. You know, and they run the fire alarm cabling, they'll bunch it along with a load of other twin and earths or something, you'll pick up interference where you get a fault on the panel. That's all it is, you know. Half the time it's installation error rather than a fault on the equipment. That's all it is. People just don't install it right. But I guarantee there'll be a load of comments going, oh, twin flex is junk. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Sorry, this is the base of the detector, just show you quickly, but. You've still got dip switches like these ones here. You've got a choice of four here. Um, those actually just control the sound of the, the you know, the bass, the, the sounder. Uh, so it's not like the twin flex system where you can change, um, you can change whether it's smoke or heat or it's, you, you know, the twin flex ones are much more programmable. These ones are a little bit simpler, but it's still the same sort of principle. All right, let's reset that panel. Give it a blast of smoke. Oh, hey, no more faults. That makes a change. Quick blast. All right, let's see what happens. There she blows. I just realized I've actually got to change the, um, so I've got to flip those zones around because for some reason they're not, uh, they're not the right way around. I'll blow a bit of air through that detector head. 
Otherwise she'll go off again in about 10 seconds. <laughs> Most, a lot of people say use a can of compressed air, but I just find your lungs also work, you know. <sighs> Sorry about the flicker. Socket there, done. Another socket there, done. Smoke detector, dragged through the ceiling, done. One down there, dragged through the ceiling, done. All right, give me two minutes, let me just load the van back in a sec. Fucking lot away. Cannot be dealing with crap. Right, everybody, I'm done. I'm gonna love you and leave you. I'm away, I've got another call out to go and do up in Finchley, so I'm gonna leave you here. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe, like, patron, somewhere on the screen here. All right, bye.